gonna, gonna wear out finger eating guitar string special. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Today we're gonna build an HD antenna. I've cut this piece of paint stick down to about nine and a half inches. Plus, I've also cut a notch in it right at about four inches from the end. The reason being, I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here is where I want to start. This will be my first mark. Go ahead and make that right there. And make it on the other side. Just take the total length of your piece of PVC, put your hand on top like this, and go the full length, drawing one whole line all the way down it without letting it roll. That'll keep it on one, one straight line down there, pretty good. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, that way I have a line on the opposite side. These are where, you, where your aerials are going to start coming out. Alright, from this mark here, I'm going to go down nine and a half inches. Make another mark. We're going to make four marks down this side. There's nine and a half inches. And another nine and a half inches. And another nine and a half inches. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Nine and a half. I like doing it this way rather than using the tape measure. Saves confusion from making mistakes or reading a number upside down and getting things off. And these two marks should be exactly side by side, which they are. Okay, from here on, I'm going to drill holes where these are. Okay, now I have all I have all my holes drilled, nine and a half inches apart. And I got all my holes drilled. I drilled with an eighth inch drill, and I even tried one of the screws. After I stuck the screws in, it it sure threads good. This screw, once it's in. These screws are going to touch, so I'm going to wind up having to grind them off and then put them in. Grind them off a little shorter or find some shorter screws. Using these ceiling tie wires for aerials on this HD antenna. As you see, I'm moving that pretty fast. With one hand at full length, these are six foot long and they don't get a permanent bend. So they're pretty stout and they'll stay pretty good. Plus they're also galvanized and that's going to keep them from rusting pretty good. Which also means the lead and zinc com composition of this is also going to make it make a decent connection. See, these are six foot. I'm going to cut them at three, f uh, three foot lengths and just bend them straight in half. So I'm going to go ahead and measure these out and cut these and then I'll show you the bends. Okay, laying this out, you notice that right here I've got a mark at 18 inches and I've got a mark here at 36 inches, which is three foot, and one more mark right over here at 54 inches, which you can't see well on the camera. And I'm going to use this one as the template for the rest of these. I marked all the way across, and I rolled it, and I rolled all of these until I had a mark that I could see all the way around, and keep on going. And I did the same here. You can see the mark is all the way around. And one more right here, and that's all the way around. All right, now what I, all I really need to do is cut these in half, and then bend these in half. And I'll show you how to bend the ends of these. Okay, well, I was too lazy to go find the cutters. If you don't have the cutters, we'll do this. It's important to keep these wires pretty much straight. Grab it next to the mark, not on the mark, but next to the mark, because that's the part that's going to bend. A few bends back and forth, this will break. Coat hanger has a tendency to want to break about the time you get it where you want it, and that's a lot of work for nothing. Now I have eight, uh, I'm sorry, four plus four, that's eight of them. That's going to do all these uh, little marks on the PVC right here. You grab these, you grab it right next to the mark. You can see I have a little bit of silver between the green and the mark, and squeeze them in. Now it's important that I want this screw to be able to go through here. And then about on the other side of the screw, I want to be able to grab this about the width of the pliers and bend a 90 degree angle. Just about like that. Get it pretty sharp. Then I want to look at the plane that the pliers are lined in. And I want to bend this out just a bit. These should be about five and a half inches apart. And after they're on here, they should be about four inches from each other. That makes a total of four and a half and five, or I'm sorry, yeah, four and a half and five inches makes a total of nine and a half inches. Now we're going to do this to every one of them. The reason why I'm doing this this way instead of the way my friend showed me, I'll demonstrate this. I'll make the bend here. I'm going to go to this side and do the same thing and get the rest of this bend in here. There we are. If I put this to a screw here and the weight wants to go down, these are not very stable. It's kind of hard to even hold it 
just pinching it by hand. It's not very good. But, like this, I can shake this good. So if I screw into the side and have these going out like that, it makes it much more resilient, much sturdier. And I like these wires because you see I can shake it like this. They're not going to bend. One I tried earlier with 14 gauge. If a bird sat on that, it would bend. So I got the seal and tie wire. It's pretty cheap. You can go right down to your local hardware store and get it. And I tell you, you want some seal and tie wire for doing a grid sealing, and it's inexpensive. And if you really wanted to, you can solder to it because the galvanization is a zinc and lead composition. And I'm going to use these bent washers that I made. The reason why I said don't bring it real close to it because that the screw is going to go through here and hold this, and that bend is to go right around here to hold this. This way, it's going to last a long time. Plus, when I put my other wire, I'm going to put it right in between here and that little gap between the bend and here and that should hold everything really tight and really make for a real good connection okay time to assemble this up first thing I want to do is just go ahead and take these screws set them into the middle of the washers start getting them on here with just a few turns I suggest using a nut driver it keeps the thread straight I'm not going to tighten this up. I'm just going to get these in the holes. Okay, as you see, well, get out of the screen, doggy. As you can see, I've got four of these mounted up. Get you a nice close view. And we'll lay this down a little bit. And I've got the first wire set in. It's bent over the top of the washer and set in and screwed down. And this wire is going to go all the way around over here to where this other one goes. To right here. Okay, got this one hooked up over here. I showed that a second ago. Then I'm going to drag this wire around like this. Put the aerial underneath the wire and then put the washer on top. Then I'm going to place one of these screws in the hole start turning it down. Using a nut driver helps out an awful lot. You want to get it tight but not really tight. That's why we use the Schedule 40 because it's a lot stouter. So that's strong. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Slide this underneath it. Washer up on top. And set the screw in. I'm not tightening it up very hard because it doesn't take much. When I'm done, I'm going to run tie wraps across it. And it'll make sure if anything ever moves or strips, it'll still be there. And I got one more on the other side. Put this underneath it. Right down on top of it. Screw it down in the hole. I'm going to put about three to five foot pounds. Yep, nice and stout. Okay, so looking up at the top, we've tightened the first one. And I've come around over to here. And I've put it through the same slot and hole. And then come straight down here instead of wrapping around. And then from there, I went around the pole over to here in the same direction. This twists this way and comes down. And then it continues to rotate the same way around down here to the fourth one. The same distance that I got between here and here, I'm going to have to go down and drill one more hole right down here. And that's my 300 ohm transformer to 75 ohm cable is going to go. And the rest of this down here, I should have a, a screw that goes all the way across and the rest of this will slide down over a pole and we'll stick it up in the air run one screw through it and that should keep it from turning so you can use what we call an armstrong rotor that's where you grab the pole that's at the ground and you use your arm like this and turn the rotor <laughs> Uh, you are the rotor. If you can put a pair of vice grips that you're not using or something on there, or some kind of a handle that points one direction, you won't have to look up in the air into the bright sun to find out which direction your antenna is set. And you can always turn it like this and like this. Now this antenna is going to receive from this side, and it's going to receive from that side. It's called a bi-directional antenna. The reason for four elements on here is if you just had nothing but a dipole setup setting out here, your angle of takeoff would be something like that. Once you put a couple more on top of it, it squishes that signal down and brings it closer to the horizon so you can pick up farther. Now I'm going to finish this up and show you the result and we're going to go ahead and tune it up and see what it comes out to. Okay, so once again, now I've got both sides on it. It's connected here. This goes around and the other one's on the opposite side keeping the same exact distance because the pipe is the same thickness all the way through. This is very important. Keeping these two wires exactly the same distance apart all the way through your antenna Make sure that you don't have any spots that are out of resonance. Well, there we are. So here, the half-wave dipole switches. Then it goes straight down here, and then it switches again. Okay, right here I have another piece of PVC. It slides up inside. Right here is a screw that went through it to hold it. The 375 ohm transformer to a couple of these washers. You see the wire is underneath set at exactly the same distance that I got these aerials all separated. Plus the uh, aerial splitting like this allow for the harmonic and resonant frequencies for the audio and the others. And I need a cap on the top just like this one but this one's too small. For the meantime I don't care if water runs down the middle of this if it rains. 
and I'm going to stick it up to this cable <coughs> and I'm going to run up inside and we're going to see how many channels we can pick up. I'm 45 miles away from the big city. This way is north and that's the direction, 45 miles to the nearest TV antennas. Then goes uh, about another 40 miles about that direction. That's uh, the big town of Dallas by gosh, Texas. <laughs> And there's a few more there, so I'm going to kind of aim it in between, like right here. That's where I've got my best reception on all the other ones. And we're going to go in there and do a, a channel scan and see how many channels we can get at 45 and almost 95 miles away. Okay, I've got a TV adapter hooked up to my computer. And we're fixing to scan the channels. Start. And the scanning is in progress. Right, I'm going to turn the camera so you can see the right side of my screen a little bit more. This will tell us how many channels we got. I've got three channels. Now I'm showing five channels, six channels, seven channels, nine channels, ten channels. Whoops, just went to eleven. It went thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, then dropped up to nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four channels. Twenty-five. It's got a ways to go. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Should be dropping a few more here in a second. I've still got one-third of the band to go. 33 channels, 34, 35, remember we're 45 miles from uh, a few of them and about 95 from the rest of them, quite a distance, it looks like 35 channels is all we get, there we go, 35 channels, it looks like the scan is complete, but anyway, 35 channels, not bad, so we look at KDTN, KDFW, KXAS, NSTWFAA, WFAA2, and there's KTBT, KERA, World, KUVN, a Spanish channel, uh, KDFI, show that I got quite a few channels here. All the way on down, Ion Life, Cubo, Smile, and Lace, JCTV, Church Channel, TBN. Ah, lots of good viewing. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Let's show you one channel here. And of course, I tuned into the Church Channel. Let's see here. Trying to show a signal strength here. TBN. There we go. 99% signal strength and 100% signal quality. Let's go down to the other channel and see what that one was. Good there. Signal strength 74%, 100% signal quality. Check another channel. JCTV. Looks like we have 99% and 100% signal quality. Well, my computer's a little slow, shows a little distortion, but anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours.